Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. I don't know how many of you have ever tried Domino's stuffed cheesy bread, but considering it's from a very cheap pizza chain, it's actually pretty good. And so today I am going to show you how to make a keto version of stuffed cheese bread. It's very, very easy, very, very good. And if you want a printable version of this, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and help support the channel. So while we do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Line a 9 by 5 inch loaf pan with parchment paper and allow the paper to hang over the sides just a little bit so you can easily lift the loaf out once it's done baking. Then set it aside for a minute. In a small bowl, combine 56 grams or around a half cup of shredded mozzarella cheese, 28 grams or around a fourth cup of shredded Colby or cheddar cheese, 6 grams or around one tablespoon of freshly grated Parmesan cheese, and about a half teaspoon of the dry Italian seasonings of your choice. I just use a fourth teaspoon of garlic powder and a fourth teaspoon of dry oregano. Stir these all together until they're fully combined and the dry seasoning is evenly distributed throughout the cheese. Then set it aside for a minute. In a large mixing bowl, combine 120 grams or around one cup of coconut flour, 15 grams or around one tablespoon of baking powder, one gram or around one fourth teaspoon of salt, four grams or around one teaspoon of xanthan gum, and one tablespoon of the dry Italian seasonings of your choice. I'm using a mix of garlic powder, onion powder, dry oregano, and dry basil. You can use whatever dry seasonings you want. You can also adjust the dry seasonings more or less according to your taste. Sift the dry ingredients all together until it is fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add four large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature so they stir in more smooth. Stir the eggs into the dry ingredients until everything is fully combined and all the dry ingredients have been moistened by the eggs. Add 180 milliliters or around 3 fourths cup of olive oil or the oil of your choice. Stir the oil in until everything is fully combined and you have a moist dough that has formed. Use your mixing spoon or whisk and break the dough up just a little bit. Then gradually add in 56 grams or around a half cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. Fold the cheese in gradually until it is evenly distributed throughout the dough. Make sure you fold the cheese in small amounts. That way it can be evenly distributed throughout the dough easily. Divide your dough into two portions. Each portion is going to weigh roughly around 278 grams. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exact even. You just want pretty much the same amount of dough in each portion. Place one portion of the dough into your prepared loaf pan. Then use your fingers or the back of a measuring cup and press the dough evenly and firmly throughout the bottom of the loaf pan. Sprinkle anywhere from 30 to 60 grams or one fourth to a half cup of shredded mozzarella cheese over the top of the dough. However much cheese you want depends on how much of a gooey center you want. I personally don't like a really gooey stretchy center so I only put around 30 grams or fourth cup of the shredded mozzarella. But if you're one of those who likes more of a gooey, stretchy center, then you can put a half cup or even a little bit more of the shredded mozzarella cheese. Make sure when you are sprinkling your cheese that you leave a little bit of space around the edges just so that the cheese doesn't get baked onto your pan. It makes it easier to lift it out if it's not crusted to your pan. Take your second portion of dough and roll it into a flat oval. 
Then place the dough over the shredded mozzarella. Press the dough evenly and firmly to cover the cheese. Make sure that as you're pressing it, you keep it as even as possible and try to keep the top as level as you can. Use a butter knife or a very thin, small spatula and just kind of drag it around the edges of the dough to help pull the dough a little bit away from the sides of the pan. This will help seal the layers together and keep your bread together better. Now, if you're wanting pull apart cheese bread, similar to what Domino's style cheese bread is, then all you would need to do is cut the bread horizontally into half to one inch sections, but I'm just leaving it as it is. I'll just slice it once it's cooked. Then take your bowl with your cheese toppings in it and sprinkle the topping evenly over the top of the bread. Again, make sure you try to keep it as even as you can so you have a somewhat level top. Place the bread in your preheated oven and bake at 400 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes or until the cheese has browned. Mine took 26 minutes and that was perfect for me. As I always say, everyone's oven is different. So you're looking for the cheese to be nice and brown on top. Once the bread is done baking, remove it from the oven. It'll be a little bit soft, but it will firm up as it cools. So allow it to cool in the pan for at least 20 to 30 minutes or until it is firm. After the bread has firmed up, grasp the overhanging parchment paper and gently lift the bread out of the pan and onto a wire rack. Then let it sit for just about three to five minutes just to make sure that the bread is firm. And you could either allow it to cool completely before slicing it or you can slice it immediately into your desired size. If you do decide that the slices need to be rewarmed once you've cut your bread, you can just pop it in the microwave for about 10-15 seconds just to put a little bit more warmth in your bread if it gets too cool for you. You can eat this immediately, or if you do have any leftovers, allow them to cool completely and store them in an airtight container in your refrigerator for up to one week. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.